My favorite part of the job is teaching. My goal for this year is to teach abroad. All I've ever wanted to do is teach. One of my students wrote to me the other day asking me why all of these forms of teach are possible after the verb is. Teaching, to teach, and just teach. Well, it's a great question. And by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly why each form is possible and when to use each one so that you can finally stop confusing infinitives and gerunds and speak like an advanced English speaker. Okay, I'm going to be talking about three forms of the verb in this lesson. Teaching, we call this the gerund. It's the ing form of the verb. And the infinitive. Now, there are two types of infinitive. The infinitive with to, like to go, to eat, to want. And what we call the bare infinitive. And that is the infinitive without to. So just go, eat, want. Okay, so now you know that, let's have a look at why and when we use the to infinitive. If you don't know me, I'm Greg. I teach English grammar and pronunciation to help you speak advanced English clearly and understand native speakers easily. And if that's what you want, subscribe to the channel. And this video comes with a free PDF, which you can download by clicking the link in the description or up there. And that will give you a full summary of today's lesson, as well as an exercise so that you can test your knowledge of this grammar. Okay, let's start today with the to infinitive. To go, to play, to eat. And generally, using the to infinitive after another verb shows purpose, intention, or the reason. In other words, it shows why something is happening. For example, dad went out, why? What's the intention? What's the reason? To buy milk. Okay? I'm writing this email, why? What's the purpose? What's the intention? to tell you something important. So we've just looked at using the to infinitive for purpose, intention, and to explain the why of something. But what about the sentence I used in the introduction, where I used a to infinitive after the verb is? My goal for this year is to teach abroad. This is a slightly more complicated sentence, but the general meaning is the same. To show purpose, to show intention, to show our goal, okay? My goal is to teach abroad. Here are some more examples. Her dream is to travel the world. One of my ambitions is to go skydiving. The company's aim last year was to increase its profits by 20%. Now, before we move on to the infinitive without to, I'm just going to tell you a few more useful things about the to infinitive. We also use the to infinitive in these situations. After the word to and after the word enough. For example, you're too tall to go on this ride. There were too many museums to see in one day. I'm not tired enough to go to bed. There is enough food to feed everyone. Okay? Easy. Now we also use the to infinitive after relative pronouns like how, what, and where. For example, I don't know how to speak Norwegian. Do you know what to do in case of an emergency? I'm not sure where to find the nearest bank. Okay, that's enough about the to infinitive. Let's have a look now at the bare infinitive or the infinitive without to. 
Okay, we've just looked at the two infinitives, like to speak, to do, to find. The bare infinitive is the infinitive without to, like speak, do, find. And one way we always use the bare infinitive is after modal verbs, like she could speak French when she was a child, not she could to speak French. That's a really, really common mistake. You may leave the room when you are finished. We might visit the museum this afternoon. Okay, easy. Modal verb, bare infinitive. Be careful. As I said, it's a really, really common mistake. No two after modal verbs. Okay, now using a bare infinitive after the verb is, like I did in the introduction, is a little bit more complicated. And that's because we only use a bare infinitive after is when we want to emphasize the action of the verb do. You'll see what I mean in a second. We only do this when we use the word all or the word what at the beginning of the sentence. And the sentence must contain do or does. Let's have a look at some examples so you can see what I am talking about. So first, the one from the introduction of this video. All I've ever wanted to do is teach. Here, we're really emphasizing the action of the verb do. The action of the verb do is teach. Let's look at another couple of examples using all. All my cat does is sleep all day. Again, the action of the verb do here is sleep. I don't know when the bus will arrive. All we can do is wait. Again, the action of the verb do is wait. Here are some examples using the word what. What you need to do now is listen very carefully. Not to listen, just listen. I think what you should do is apologize to her. And what I want you to do is stay here and don't move. Okay, these sentences are called cleft sentences and they're a way of emphasizing information. And in these cases, we are emphasizing the action that is being done. Now, if you think about it, this is similar to the way that we can emphasize a normal verb using do. Look at this. You never listen to me. I do listen. I just couldn't hear you. I do listen. There I'm emphasizing that, yes, I listen. But because we use do, we're really emphasizing that verb. <laughs> My son has a driving test today. I do hope he passes this time. Again, we're emphasizing the verb hope by putting do before it. And again, we use this structure with the bare infinitive to emphasize the action of the verb. Right, before we move on to the gerunds or the ing form of the verbs, we can also use bare infinitives with some perception verbs. Perception verbs? <laughs> What are they? <laughs> Perception verbs are verbs like see, hear, taste, feel. For example, I heard the motorcycle arrive before I saw it. Or, they didn't see him score the goal. During the earthquake, we felt the ground move. All these include the bare infinitive. And we also do this with some common verbs like let and make. Let me introduce myself. That film made me cry. Okay, again, if you learn a verb, learn how to use it because some of these common ones just require the bare infinitive after. Okay, time to move on to the gerunds. Okay, remember this sentence from the beginning of the lesson? My favorite part of the job is teaching people. Why is it possible to say is teaching? Why don't we say 
is to teach. Well, the first thing to recognize is that this is not a sentence that states a goal or a purpose or an intention. And that means we don't use to teach. Instead, this sentence describes an activity, teaching people. The word teaching in this sentence is the ing form. It's a gerund which basically acts like a noun. And you can recognize a gerund if you rewrite the sentence and replace it with the word it. It's possible. Teaching people is my favorite part of the job. It is my favorite part of the job. Now, because gerunds act like nouns and represent general activities or concepts, we can use them after the verb to be. Here are some similar examples with gerunds after the verb to be. What I enjoy most in my free time is reading. Her main responsibility was organizing events. Their biggest challenges were managing employees and dealing with angry customers. Gerunds are really, really useful. And here are another few ways that we can use them. First, as the subject. So it can be a single word or a longer, more complex subject. Like swimming is really good for your health. Or a much longer one, hunting tigers and other endangered animals is illegal. Okay, we can also use the gerund as a direct object of a verb, like I love going on holiday. I hate flying. It makes me nervous. I prefer traveling by train. We can also use the gerund as the object of a preposition or phrasal verb. For example, she is good at painting. She always tries to put off going to the dentist. Okay, and if you want to know more about phrasal verbs, click that video there. Oh, and there's the worksheet I was talking about from this lesson, which is a great summary of everything I've taught you. And it comes with a test so you can check you've learned the grammar perfectly. And it's free. Click there to download it. Thanks for watching and bye for now.